All right, Panther fans. So, um, meant to make this video yesterday, and uh, long story short, spent nine hours at the emergency vet with Ellie yesterday. I made a couple posts about it. She's okay. She 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 had a, a massive cyst that burst and got infected, but surgery went well. She's good. She's home. She's recovering. So that's good. Um, hug your pets. Hug your pets because the you spend nine hours at the emergency vet with everybody else's vet was closed for Memorial Day, obviously. And uh, so it was it was slam busy and I spent half the day crying and it wasn't even over my my dog. So hug your pets. All right. So uh, I've been meaning to do this. Some final thoughts on the season to, to just wrap up, and close the door. On last year, I, I know Stu and I did one, but it's kind of closer to the end of the season. And I wanted to give myself a little bit of space and time. And obviously, plenty of other things have gone on for me to kind of give myself some clarity on not just how things ended, but what the season was in itself. And my thoughts haven't really, um, if I had to sum it up in a sentence, what a waste that that would be that would be my thought on it is is what a waste and i'm just going to throw one only going to throw really one statistic out there and that is two names patrick hornquist and radko gudis hornquist and gudis were the only players that played 50 or more games for the panthers last season that did not have a career high in either goals, assists, or both. Hornquist and Gudis were the only guys. So what that tells me is that it's not like Edmonton, where, you know, where Flames couldn't shut down McDavid. It's not even so much like, you know, a Tampa with you got your big three, Kucherov and Stamkos and Sergachev. Headman for the point is, is that the lightning shut down an entire team that had just had career years with the exception of a couple of guys. So before we get into how it ended, you know, you have to take into it. If, if you took away the way it ended and you look at our season on one hand, I know there's going to be plenty of people that say it was the best Panther season ever you know, president's trophy, everything like that. But for me, the way that it ended taints that significantly. Now, if we had taken Tampa to seven games, you lose in double overtime, game seven. Don't like it, but you can accept the, you can accept things as, as progress. For me, I don't believe we made a whole lot of progress in the sense that to be the best, you have to beat the best. Now I'm looking at the Western conference teams and I'm thinking we can beat these guys because I'm watching hockey being played the way we saw it be played in, in the regular season to an extent. They're not really playing a lot of shutdown D in the Western conference. I'm watching the Rangers and Canes. They're good defensively, but it's nothing like what we saw happen to us against the Lightning. Now, you could say that Tampa, you know, got themselves elevated to an even better level of play against us because of the competition, of the rivalry, and, and, and a lot of people saying, you know, there were a lot of people saying, including myself to an extent, Tampa's going to be tired. They're, they're, they can only go for so long. They're not going to win three in a row. How many, how many times did we say that? Well, they're not going to win three in a row. Come on. But I think they're fixing to win three in a row. So on one hand, you can say the lightning being that good and having Vasilevsky is this kind of a special circumstance, right? Because you look at the rest of the teams and, I mean, the way even in the Rangers Kane series, I feel confident if the Panthers went out there and played the way that they did against even the Capitals, 
that we could win those series. So the dilemma now comes and that dilemma is how much do you mess with the successful formula that we had during the regular season? How much do you mess with that? How much do you tweak that in order to get over the Tampa Bay hump? Because what Tampa learned in the series last year is that if they want to beat us, they're not going to be able to play their run and gun style. They are going to have to shut everything down and lean on Vasilevsky to make the saves. And not only did it work, but it worked perfectly. Not only did they sweep us, but they shut us out again in the, in the, in the last game. So what, what they set out to do as close to perfect. I mean, three goals in four games is absurd. So, and I'm sure this is, this is the dilemma that Zito faces is that you have an entire team basically that just had career best years. And so how much do you want to tweak that? How much do you want to change that? You want to bring in new guys? I don't think so. You want to lay it all on the coach? You can't lay it all on the coach. Brunette did not have a good postseason. He's not quick to make adjustments. And we've talked about that. And the, the situation with, with Brunette, to me, is, is, again, a unique thing because the, the Panthers went out and hired a veteran coach in Q. The, they knew that they needed a veteran coach. Now you enter Brunette and the, the, you're not going to give him a one-year deal, right? So this, this is not a situation where if, if, if he was the guy they went out and hired and we lose like this, I don't think he gets fired. But in this situation, you have to decide if, you're, if he's going to be your guy for, I mean, you got to give him three years, right? You're not going to give him a one-year contract. So you're basically throwing it out there that we believe he's going to be the guy or not. Because you're not going to want to give him, you know, you don't want to make another coaching change if, you know, if Brunette doesn't work out. So tough call there. And I've, I've given my opinion there and we don't need to get into that overwhelmingly. But more than just the coaching is, is how much do you want to mess with what we did this season? And I've given it a lot of thought and Look, we know Tampa can beat you both ways, right? And we saw that with the Panthers to some extent as the season went on and we would have to go on these road trips. You know, when Burnett took over, the road record wasn't really, we weren't doing, well, we were 7-0, but in the beginning, we weren't good on the road. And as the season went on, we got better and better at playing tougher, defensive-minded hockey and winning, you know, close games that way. Now, Vasilevsky is sort of the equalizer there because we're against another team where we might get our three and four goals. With Vasilevsky, we're liable to only get two. And as you saw, liable to also possibly not get two. So to me, the more I've thought about it, I mean, look, you're not going to bring, be able to bring back the same exact core of guys um, or the same group. We're going to keep the core for the most part, but you're not going to be able to bring back everybody. It's not enough cap space. There's decisions to be made with Drew and Mammon and Marchment, Uyghur, right? So there's, there's a lot of different things in play. Now, I firmly believe that this group of guys can go out there again next year. Are they going to win the president's trophy again? Maybe not. And the reason why I don't think that's going to happen is because Tampa provided the league a blueprint. Now it was already kind of known that if you played the Panthers tough defensively, that they don't really, they don't have guys that really on a regular basis overcome that. But Tampa really shoved that down our throat and there's going to be a lot of teams watching a lot of film who may not play that style of defense normally, who might say, well, for this game, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play with, we're going to completely destroy and clog up the neutral zone and take our chances that way. You're going to see a lot of teams next year employing that system because they only have to play us one night. It's not like they have to play us for seven games straight. So 
we're not going to we're not going to get the same amount of goals next year. You're going to see a decline in scoring. Not going to see anywhere near the number of guys having career seasons because it's just not going to be the same level of room left for this team on the ice. So there's only one way to do this. The more I've thought about it, there's only one way, and that is a, a change of mindset, an elevation of the will, a rededication, a doubling of our efforts. And what I mean by that is I'm not even going to sit here and, you know, I, I, it's entertainment and it's, it's fun and it's all cliche to say, get off of the beach, get off the scooter, get, stop focusing on Instagram and weather reports and, and get in the gym and get in the rink. That's not, that's true. But at the same point, these are, these are kids and you just can't expect them to not live their life where they're living down in South Florida. That, that is part of the dilemma is life is good. Oh, we lost, but now I can go to Los Alamos and, and hang out. And <laughs> it's, it's, you're not going to be able to pull a Don Shula and sequester these guys, right? Like he used to do in training camp. The only way this is going to work is if, if you get these guys to recognize and mature to the point where they realize that they're, they're getting by on the talent that they have. They're getting by on being so much more talented than most of the teams that they play every night that they don't really have to go out there and give full on hardcore effort every night. They don't have to go after teams and, and employ a physical style and take the hits and give the hits. And, and they don't have to play that way on a nightly basis, or at least they haven't to up to this point to have success in the regular season. And to some extent, I'm sure they're watching the Western Conference playoffs and they're wondering what the hell happened well the eastern conference plays a different style of hockey and if it you know if it's tampa now it was the islanders for a couple of years you know before this last season where when you played them it was just impossible to score against them you know they beat us in the play-ins there's always going to be a team or three the canes and rangers are going to seven games right now i believe those were the two teams, at least in the Eastern Conference, and probably the whole hockey, that gave up the fewest goals. So we can look at the Western Conference teams and think we could beat them, but you have to get to the dance. You have to be able to get out of your conference. And to get out of this conference, we're going to have to if you don't want to say we're going to have to change our style, you're going to have to say we're going to have to change our, our mindset. These guys absolutely, Tampa just wanted it more. They just wanted it more. They were willing to sacrifice. And we see the sacrifices on the ice. You know, the laying down and the blocking the shots and the taking the hits and the giving of the hits. And that is one thing. I don't, I don't follow Tampa close enough to know what they're doing in their spare free time. I don't know the players. I don't know if they're out hanging out and partying just like our Panther guys or not. I don't know if those guys are, are, are more serious about things and spending more time at the rink and spending more time at the gym and watching film. I don't know if that's what Tampa is doing or not, but I do know, I believe that, because of the unique circumstances of living in South Florida, I believe that making a commitment to doing less of the fun living and more work and changing the mindset is the only way that this team is going to get out of this conference. Because the Islanders out toughed us, Tampa out toughed us last season, not this previous, but in the, in the, previous season we couldn't beat carolina because they beat the crap out of us every time we played them all it takes is a team with the mental toughness 
to play tough against the Panthers and they fold pretty much every time. And, and it's, it's a shock. It's like, Oh, somebody laid one hit like Brandon Montour laying down and blocking a shot in game four. It was like, wow, Montour blocked a shot. Meanwhile, Tampa's blocking who knows how many shots every, every game, just laying down over and over and over and over and over again. You're not going to fix what, the Panthers problem is with with some new one player one player gone one new player in it's a mindset and I understand the mindset of hey they're kids you know they there was a there was a picture of Huberto the day after the 4-0 loss and he's in Los Olas and he's met with a couple of nice looking young ladies we'll leave it at that okay not that there's something wrong with that. And that's the point. There were people criticizing him. And then there were, you know, people saying, hey, look, he's, he's, he's human. He's, he's a kid. He's just a person. That's, that's true. That is true. He has every right to go out and do that. He's earned the right. He's earned the money. He's earned the status. Any of those guys that go out there on a regular basis and are really just having fun and living their life to their fullest to that extent they've earned that right but they ain't gonna win a cup doing that because they're not going to be able to develop the tough enough mindset to get out of the eastern conference if that's the mentality they're going to spend their free time with and it doesn't make them wrong for doing it Okay, don't get me wrong here, but everybody knows South Florida is a special set of circumstances. There's no place else in the country, really. There's certainly no sports location that I can think of, you know, maybe out west in L.A. and whatnot. You know, the New York teams, there's, there's winter, you know what I mean? The northern teams that have a city, you know, somewhat similar, there, there's winter right? Florida, these guys are riding jet skis in January. And again, they've earned the right. I get it. I totally get it. But just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean you should. And I believe the only way that this team is going to make it out of this conference is if somebody in the room can get to these kids and say, look, it's going to come down to a choice. You can party and hang out and the jet skis and all the screw, and you could do all of that and you'll make the playoffs because you're that good, but you're probably not going to develop the mental toughness required to get out of the conference. If that's what you're doing, if you're not, and I'm just, I'm spitballing here. But in their free time, how much film are they really watching? How much, I know Ekblad went through this because I got blocked for agreeing with him. It was a couple of years back, a few years ago, where Ekblad had the summer of, I got back into the gym. I wasn't hanging out as much and doing as much partying. And I got back into the gym and I got into shape. And I had been saying that he needed to do that for a couple of years. And when the article came out that he said, that's what I did. I got back into the gym and stopped hanging out so much. He said it in the article. I retweeted the article saying, see, I told you he needed to do this. And then he blocked me for it. So there might be a particular mindset in that locker room that maybe their shit don't stink. These guys might think they're a little bit better than they actually are because they're certainly the best Panther team we've ever had. We've other than, you know, Pavel Bure, if we really had players of that, you know, of Barkov and Huberto and some extent Ekblad, have we drafted and had players as Panthers that are in that realm? No. So these are the best hockey players, certainly the best group of hockey players the Panthers have ever had. And the question is, are they complacent with that? Is that going to be enough for them? And it, year after year, starts to look like it is. It looks like it is. 
Now, Huberto has every right to go out there and do what he did the game after. However, uh, while you could say that, on the other hand, life is about perception and optics. Is that necessarily the best time to get photographed with a couple of hotties the day after the sweep? The day after the sweep, when you know the fans are just beside themselves, you got people talking on Twitter about how they haven't cried that long in a long time. Everybody is stunned. Zito is stunned. The coach is stunned. Everybody is stunned. And you're going to go out and party the next day. And I get the need to relieve stress. I do. I do get it. But it just might be that if that's the manner in which you're going to react to being swept in the playoffs, you might not be winning a cup. That's how you react to winning the cup. You go out and you party the next day. So the more I see of this team, the individual guys, and again, I don't know all the behind the scenes stuff, but the more that I see little pieces of what I do see, I don't see guys that have the commitment, the mental commitment level that I believe the Tampa Bay Lightning do. And if this group of guys is going to win, they're going to have to get past Andre Vasilevsky and the Lightning. There's just no way around that. They're not going anywhere. They reloaded their entire third line this season. They didn't miss a beat. Vasilevsky's what? He's 12 years old at this point. He's going to be here a while, okay? He's going to be here quite some time. The only downside with Vasilevsky is Tampa needs to get themselves a good backup goalie. So... They're not completely burning Vasilevsky out. Get somebody that you can throw out there for 30 games a year to don't burn them out, you know? So that's where we are, in my opinion. And unfortunately, I feel the only way to change, you know, they say there's been a culture change. I don't, ah, I don't, I don't see a culture change. I see a, obscene level in the talent that on a nightly basis in the regular season, we can exploit. And I haven't seen a culture change. A culture change would have resulted in a seven game series when the lightning decided we're going to shut down the neutral zone and you're going to have to play rough, tough, rock em, sock em hockey. If you want out of this round, that's if there was a culture change, we're still playing hockey right now. Or game seven would have been what last night, tonight, today, whenever it would have been. Okay. I see a culture change. They're ridiculously talented to the level of which during the regular season, other teams for the most part can't keep up. And it, it, the energy feeds itself. You get a couple of goals on a goalie in the middle of February. Ah, next thing you know, it's five nothing. That's not, that doesn't illustrate anything that we can do in the playoffs it just doesn't and the question i have the question after the sweep is are these kids going to figure that out and seeing huberto out there partying the day after gives me pause to wonder if these guys are going to be figuring it out or not because he should be sick he should be way too angry and sick and pissed off and all sorts of other things to be able to go out there and, and pose for a picture of smiling in public with a drink and a couple girls doesn't make it that he can't do it. Does he's got to live his life. That's fine. But it's all about choices. Everybody who's an adult and even anybody over the age of 10 has probably already learned life is about choices. Yeah, I can do this, but what's the consequence going to be? What's my mental state going to be? And I don't see it changing. I don't see it changing. Not with this group of guys. The only way you change the culture for real is a new coach. And, and, you know, I'm sure that this stuff probably still went on under, under Q. So I'm not throwing brunette. It's not like, it's not like Q left and the players just started going crazy. You've got a group of young, extremely talented men. 
obviously aren't going to have much financial issues, living in a location that is paradise, especially for most of these kids that came from, I mean, Huberto grew up in Canada. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he'd been down to South Florida as a kid, but there's no place like it really on earth for the most part that they, they eat that these kids have gone to. And so you, you, you're trying to balance all that temptation with work. And when you have ridiculous success the way they had in a regular season, you probably get to thinking, ah, I can do both. I don't see it. We're not going to get out of this conference. Not without a complete, a real culture change. We had a culture of losing. Now we have a culture of winning to an extent. But there hasn't been a culture change that would even bring us up to the level of where hur the hurricanes are right now. And to that extent, that extends to the fans. Now, obviously, I, I'm not criticizing anybody. I can't go. I can't get down there and go to a game. And I know the fans down there have put up with a lot. It's been a long, long drag. I get it. But man, you listen to the built, you listen to the garden, you listen to how loud it is in Carolina. It's loud. It's obnoxiously loud. And it doesn't matter the circumstance, unless, unless one of those teams gets really down. You know, if it's if they're losing 2-1 in Carolina. That fan base knows we need to help our players out. We need to give them some energy to feed off of. And, and it happens. It wasn't loud enough in that building. I'm sorry. It just wasn't. It was, it was loud, but it wasn't anything remotely close to what went down in 96. That place was rocking. That place was full of energy with the rats and, and, and the, there, were, there was energy that the players could feed off of it. And I know it goes both ways. We saw that during the regular season with the we want 10 chance and all of that. But again, it's regular season. The playoffs, the fans need to learn to step up their game the same way the players do. And that's it. That's it. I don't need to go on any further. So in terms of wrapping up this season, what a waste. If you want a slogan for last year, what a waste. Because these guys can be better than that. But they have to learn how to do it. They have to want to learn how to do it. You have to, to solve a problem. You have to recognize a problem. And I'm not quite sure these kids do yet. They might. But you just think about the personality types. Ovechkin, Stamkos. Kucherov, Sergachev, McKinnon, McDavid. Do you see anybody on the Panthers with that, that flair that we all can see the difference in how they carry themselves on the ice? There's a different level of, of mannerism. Claude Giroux has it to some extent. What did somebody, it was, it's, the intensity, they have a different level of intensity to them. And I just don't know who on this team is going to get there. And you need more than one guy. You need more than one guy. And I don't know. I don't know if these are the guys, but what I know is that whatever we need to get out of these guys, Andrew Burnett ain't, is not going to get that out of them and and really i don't even know if if q he might have he might have because it's not just strategy i know i've given brunette a lot of flack for strategy and it's at least at least 50 percent strategy but the other 50 percent is on the players and if you can get swept and go party on los olas the next night um makes you wonder what these coaches are really working with so that's it. I'll shut up now. Was a good year for me in terms of the channel. Gained almost 1,100 subscribers over the course of the season. Tons of support with the Patreon and the YouTube memberships. I think I'm, I think I'm close to 40 now. 
might be more than 40. It's, it's just been great. It's, it's just been fantastic, the level of support. Really appreciate it. Tomorrow is game seven. I will obviously be recapping that. And then once the conference finals start, I will be doing the live streams one hour before the game for the pregame live stream. And then the recaps and obviously the reviews with Stu. But in terms of last season for the Panthers, this is it. This, this, this is all there was. It's, it's kaputs. It's over. Throw the roses away. That's it. We're done with last year. We're going to do these playoffs. I have multiple things planned. I'm going to be doing um, a couple of things. I'm going to be doing player grades. And I'm going to go back and try to find the full games for the Lightning series. And I'm just going to watch them and break them down. So those might be a little bit long um, and they obviously won't be monetized, but I want to do that for me. I want to go back and, and look at some of these individual plays and see what, what really happened. Because to our eyes, it looks like we just basically got strategically and physically beat the crap out of um, I What I want to see is I want to see how much of it was our decision making making you know how much was tampa and how much was our guys making poor decisions with the puck because there were a lot of poor decisions with the puck so that's probably not going to come until after the playoffs are over because that's going to be pretty time consuming but um so i will be doing those things so as a team it's i'm not talking about last year but for the main for for those the purposes of those videos will be to look at what's going on and see how people can improve and how we can get better as a team. And of course, then we'll have free agency and who knows what's going to happen at coach, et cetera, et cetera. So no lack of, no lack of content. So, all right. I appreciate all the support and uh, I will see you guys again tomorrow with game seven.